Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of Genesis 21, 6. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. <coughs> so that is the verse. Let's go up a few. We'll go up to the first one, the birth of Isaac. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son, who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him, because he, he was creating the new race, uh, Israel, the Israelite, out of Abraham's seed. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. God protects Hagar and Ishmael. And this actually goes into a different context. So we'll stick with what we got there and see what the devotion has to say. So what happened with Abraham was actually a miracle. God took two very old people and created a child between them. And all nations were raised up, especially for uh, the nation of Israel, was raised up to that child, to that child, in that child. Um, and it was a promise God had made to him. And there's a very interesting uh, story behind that in the act of faith that Abraham showed when he believed God that he would, he would, uh, when he asked for him to sacrifice Isaac, that he would bring him back to life, you know. Well, God made this promise. He was going to raise up all these nations to Isaac. So obviously, if he's asking for me to sacrifice him, he's either going to stop me or save Isaac, one or the other. And he did. It was a great act of faith. And this is how we become children of Abraham, because we act in faith and believe God. It was far above the power of nature, and even contrary to its laws, that the age Sarah should be honored with a son. And even so, it is beyond all ordinary rules that I, a poor, helpless, undone sinner, should find grace to bear about in my soul the indwelling spirit of the Lord Jesus. I, who once despaired, as well I might, for my nature was a dry and withered and barren, and accursed as a howling wilderness, even I have been made to bring forth fruit unto holiness. So we know, understand now what the reference here is, is Sarah had no ability to have children. No ability to bear that type of fruit, and yet the Lord made it possible. How is that so remarkable? He does the same thing with us, and that we don't have the ability to bear fruit, and yet somehow he does that through us. Amazing. Well may my mouth be filled with joyous laughter because of the singular surprising grace which I have received of the Lord. For I found Jesus, the promised seed, and he is mine forever. This day will I lift up psalms of triumph unto the Lord, who has remembered my low estate. For my heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. I would have all those that hear of my great deliverance from hell, and my most blessed visitation from on high, laugh for joy with me. I would surprise my family with my abundant peace. That's actually something that happened with here with me and my family. They're actually pretty surprised at my peace because the army messed me up pretty good. I, I wasn't in very much peace for a long time, and now it's different. I would delight my friends with my ever-increasing happiness. I would edify the church with my grateful confessions and even impress the world with the cheerfulness of my daily conversation. That's funny because that's like the stuff I've been doing for a long time. I, I, it's, I go out of my way to try to make people smile or laugh or both. That's interesting to read that because that's, that's what I, it seems like that's, I always try to do that. Grateful confessions. Yeah, I, I'm grateful. So, I mean, 
what he's describing here, this should be a state for the majority of us. To express openly and vividly our gratitude to the Lord and the cheerfulness we have in Christ. And, and even if we're not feeling good and, and to still be upbeat and to still be moving forward, you know. Even if in our misery, even when we're miserable, to still be, to have, you know, this attitude of upliftedness. And then, then that's all evidence that the Holy Spirit is working in us. So yeah, I, I understand what he's talking about here. It makes sense. Bunyan tells us that Mercy laughed in her sleep. And no wonder when she dreamed of Jesus. My joy shall not stop short of hers, while my beloved is the theme of my daily thoughts. And this is a, a big, important ideology here, is to have Jesus as our daily thoughts. This is only achieved, from my perspective, when you're reading the Word. When you're in the Word every day, Jesus is always in the volume of the book it's spoken of me, it speaks of me. So if we have a verse that we take, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to read a verse out of Proverbs, and that's going to be my verse for the day, and I'm going to remember that verse, or any verse in the Bible, and you meditate on that, and that's Jesus being the theme of your daily thoughts. Wondering what the Lord would think about certain things. Wondering what he would think about this or that or what's going on in your daily life or in the government or around the world. This goes back to what we talked about yesterday about the peace that defies all understanding and joy inexpressible. You can only have those things because of the Holy Spirit. They're fruit of the Holy Spirit. You can also only have those things by making that the focus of your day. By making him, Jesus Christ, the focus of your day. The Lord Jesus is a deep sea of joy. My soul shall dive therein, shall be swallowed up in the delights of his society. Sarah looked on her Isaac and laughed with excess of rapture, and all her friends laughed with her. And thou, and though my soul, and thou, my soul, look on thy Jesus, and bid heaven and earth unite in the joy unspeakable, the joy inexpressible. Now, why do we have that joy? And people will wonder. They'll always wonder. Why? Why are you so happy? And looking at Sarah. Sarah, you were an old woman. And you just had a kid. How are you so happy? You've got to be miserable. That's got to be miserable. At your age? Can you imagine being that old and how, how much more, more, um, how much more, painful the pain is and she laughed see that was a joy not from having a child that was a joy from bearing fruit for the Lord or the Lord bearing fruit through her and knowing what great things are going to come because of it seeing the Lord working is one of the things when you you stumble across something in nature and you look at it and immediately you start to remember a verse in the Bible and it reminds you the hand of the Lord and how he works in his creation and you see it and you're like, I can see his hand working here. I see him working here. This is what he created and I'm witnessing it. And you realize this is a, a remarkable miracle and it causes you to laugh. There are times when that joy inexpressible has expressed itself. Things that I've seen or discovered or suddenly it dawns on me something or I'll find something in the Bible. The, the, the sense of discovery is amazing. And then I, I consider it and I'm like, that's, that's the Lord right there working. And you can't help but have that stuff well up inside you and it causes you to laugh. That's amazing. It's encouraging. It's strengthening. And it's, it's beautiful to witness because the rest of the world can't see those things. The rest of the world can't witness those things. We see that and we're like, Lord, that's you right there. We can't help but be elated and filled with joy because of it. This is what Sarah was going through. She saw the Lord's hand working. He literally did it through her body. And she's looking at this little boy. He's like, this, God made this child. He put this child together. He made my body who couldn't bear children to bear this child. This is amazing. It's a miracle. I'm witnessing a miracle. And it caused her to laugh. That joy inexpressible was expressed. I've been privileged to be able to feel that joy over the years a few times. And it is an amazing feeling. It's almost 
getting to that point where you're just about to spill over into the full effect of the love of the Lord. Almost. It's, it, it's a euphoria you can't describe. Probably, it's probably the only taste of what the rapture would feel like that you would ever get is when you get to that point where nothing, you don't feel any heat, no cold, and you don't feel any pain or anything. It's just this immense joy. And it completely overwhelms you and saturates you. I think that's what the rapture is going to feel like. And we get just a tiny taste of it when that joy inexpressible is expressed. And this is what we're witnessing here. It was, it was rapture, joy and rapture. Amazing. When you go to the movie, The Wizard of Oz, and you hear the scarecrow, and the uh, the wizard was going to give him a brain. And the scarecrow was so happy that he, that was his statement. He says, oh, joy and rapture. Because he was so elated, he was going to finally see his desire come to fruition. He couldn't, he couldn't hold himself back. And you look at that statement, it's just a line in a movie, but when you think of it from this perspective, you're like, I now understand what he, what he was really referring to there. And you can now paint a picture of the emotion that would be behind what was going on. It kind of leads a little bit more credence to this. And it also makes you look at that scene and other scenes like it and go, I now understand why they were in that emotion. I can go back right here to Genesis 21.6 because Sarah had that emotion. Amazing. It's almost like a life imitates art type scenario. But in this case, it's God. When he makes a thing to happen, it is remarkable and amazing to witness. But when he makes a thing happen and somehow we're there to see it, or even at some point he uses us and we play a small part in it. Not that we did anything, but we were just a participant in it. And we're right there and we witness it happen. It's like, I know what that is. That's God's hand working. This is when that joy inexpressible comes out. Because we're witnessing him. We see it in our lives. When he opens our understanding to the word and we're like, well, wait a minute. I didn't read that before. I haven't seen that before. I know what other verses that connects to. That's when you get that small moment of that joy inexpressible expressed because you just saw God working. He just opened your understanding. You're like, whoa, hold on a second. I was like that with Ecclesiastes 12. Amazing. And so we can have this moment. How do we do that? Stay in the word. Prayer. And watch him work. And you will see the most remarkable things happen. And when you realize it's him, that joy will come out. Just for a moment, but that joy will come out. And it is at that moment you will realize what true joy feels like and what true rapture feels like. And that's going to be heaven forever. That's going to be heaven forever. Expressing the inexpressible joy. In our Lord, in our God. And in his kingdom. Amazing. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and to sing wonderful praises under your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. Nowadays, it's hard to find opportunities to be happy and for joy. And sometimes that happiness is very reserved because of physical pain, emotional pain other issues going on, things that are outside of our control, things that we hate to witness and see, and times even that we have to just, we, we look at a situation, there's nothing we can do, we have to turn and walk away because there are other things more important we have to direct our attention to. And we always wonder, you know, could I have done more? Could I have done better? Could I have done anything? Why did that have to happen that way? Why are things the way they are? Why are so many suffering? Why are so many dying? What a horrible thing. But even in those moments, even in those terrible situations, even in those things we, we consider all the time and how terrible they are, 
There are moments that pop up in there for that joy inexpressible to be expressed. And Father, it is only when we see your hand working in our lives and in other people's lives that we find that joy expressed. When we see someone get saved, one of my favorite moments is to be there helping somebody get baptized, dunking somebody in the, under the water and bringing them up, laying them down in death with Christ and rising them, bringing them up out of the water, rising with Christ. And to feel the Holy Spirit surround us in that moment. That's one of my joy, ex inexpressible, expressed moments. To see someone suddenly realize the truth and come around to it. To, to see somebody who had such a look of sternness and concentration and depression and anger and frustration and on their face and then to speak a word or two of encouragement and to see all of it just completely drain away and them to realize I found a kindred spirit. I found a brother or sister in Christ. And for them to, to know that there's still love in the world and to, to see that there are still people like me here. I, I, I thought I was alone and yet I have brethren here. And for them to see that and realize, ah, and then when they come, you come around, they recognize you. Hey, how you doing? And they look forward to you seeing your smiling face because you make them feel good just by speaking a couple of words of kindness. That's one of those moments when that joy inexpressible is expressed. The moment whenever we realize that we're standing in the place we're supposed to be, you're using us. And this is one of the big ones for me too, is you're using, when you use us to do your will, use us to, to, to uh, influence good stuff and good change and good works that, to help us to help another. That joy inexpressible gets expressed. It, it's not a lot of moments, but it's the important moments. So it's wonderful whenever we find those issues. I believe, for Lord, that Sarah was going through that same experience. And she's sitting there and, and she heard all the words. But when she saw the child, when she saw the fruition of the speech, and she saw the fruition of the promise, and this is key. When she saw the promise come to fruition, when she saw it happen right before her eyes and thought, he used me to do this, but I'm able to be a witness to this. Whether it was me or not, it's okay. It was I'm able to witness it. I'm looking at the fruit of the promise. And it created this great sense of expressed joy in her. The joy inexpressible coming out. She couldn't hold it in. She couldn't help herself. Because she was witnessing the miracle of miracles. I wonder if it was the same for Mary when she had Jesus. Knowing what she knew. incredible so when that time comes for the rapture for the removal of the church I know that's going to be another great moment but the amazing part about that moment is is that joy won't subside it won't stop here it'll come and then it'll subside until the next moment comes. There it'll stay forever. And so when we get those little tastes of it, it really paints a different picture and a different understanding in our minds. And it also causes us to look more to you because now it's like, I want that again. I want that joy again. I want to experience it again. It's amazing. Amazing feeling. To anyone out there who hasn't felt it, give it time. It'll come and you'll know it when it comes. But to those of you that have experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. Well, Father, I thank you that you give us these moments, just, just a second, just a couple of seconds, just a, a moment to experience your love, full strength, the expression of that love and the expression of that joy we have coming out of us. Even if it's for a moment, it's incredible because it causes us to understand that's what heaven is like. That's what a life in your presence forever is like. And so we, we look for those moments. We long for those moments because that is when we get, we feel like we're the closest to you. But I say this to my brothers and sisters, Lord, and I pray that you put this on their heart. We can have that moment every day by reading your word, talking to you in prayer, engaging with anyone we can about the truth. 
even if it's on a, a minor level. That joy is expressed then because it's an opportunity for us to serve you, and that brings me joy. It should be joyful for us to serve you. And I know that even if I can do it a little bit, it's making a difference. I witnessed your hand working yesterday in a particular conversation. You're still working on that person. So there's hope. You're still working on all of us. And so there's always hope. And that brings me joy when there's hope. When there's hope in something good, that brings me joy. That joy inexpressible starts to leak out a little. I love these moments. I love them when this happens because it's encouraging. And it strengthens us and pushes us to keep going, to keep driving, to keep striving to enter by the narrow gate. to keep looking and watching for you. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. Sometimes we look for the great big moments. We're looking for that great big feeling this is where a lot of people get off track because they go to the churches and they do the whole gibberish thing. And they throw their hands in the air and it's a rock concert and all this. And they, they take that superficial feeling and say, that's my religion. That's I'm saved because of that. And not realizing that there's a much better one. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's, when you realize the Lord just used you to preach to someone else. It's when you realize the Lord used you to benefit or to help or to bless someone else is when you make that discovery of that scripture and suddenly that light bulb turns on and you realize, whoa, oh, I get it now. And your understanding has grown. It's when you are speaking a prayer to the Lord and he answers it and you're witnessing it happen in real time. Those little moments of joy are the real joy and expressible. When we see him using us and working in our lives, we see him directing our paths. And when our understanding changes to the point that we know what those things are, and we know what we're witnessing is our God living and active, working in our lives real time. That's a joy you cannot believe. We overlook it. Well, my goal in this video is to bring you back to pay more attention to it. Because those are the moments that bring the greatest happiness. Knowing our God is standing right there. Because when those things happen, you have to look around because he's standing right there. You may not see him, but he's there. Right next to you. Helping you and leading you and strengthening you. Preparing you for heaven. Making you ready. Amazing. Amazing that it's that personal. He's not a, a, an external God. He's an internal God. He's not way out there in the distance. He's right here. His Holy Spirit dwells within us. Hello. He's right here. And so you don't have to go far and wide looking for those moments of incredible joy and bliss and rapture. You just need to look right in your Bible. You just need to look in the world around you and see him work. Because you will see it. Our problem is we've been distracted by it. We've been taught not to look for it. But I can tell you the greatest miracle is right in front of you. So look right in front of you and see what is there and then look for him. All of a sudden you realize it's been happening the whole time. And there comes that joy. <laughs> That joy inexpressible comes forward. You can't help it. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.